All right. So let's go into our architecture roundup session. So we discussed these three architectures uh, in a very in-depth manner. So what we'll do is we'll go through them in a very quick manner and just a quick roundup on all, all those three architectures and discuss uh, quickly. All right. The first one. So this one is a very uh, straightforward, but much uh, like efficient uh, uh, architecture where it uh, it is dynamically generating images. Let's say we need a thumbnail, we need a different resolution version, and it will uh, create like a cached version of that image and store in CloudFront and then serve to the end users. So idea is okay. I would request this uh, image and it would uh, uh, it would generate that version of the image. So it, uh, this Lambda function uses uh, Node.js and Sharp uh, to do the uh, do the image processing part. So they, they have mentioned it on their uh, description as well. So they use uh, Node.js in the Lambda and Sharp as the image processing library. And it would do another step with image and recognition to sort of get the tags of that image. Let's say this image contains mountain, things like that. So they can do that sort of validation there. I mean, you can do anything with that. You can do content moderation, you can do image uh, object detection with image and recognition. So whatever the use case, you can use uh, image and recognition. But you also can use without uh, image and recognition. So that was one of the points we were talking about earlier. And as soon as the image is ready to be served, it would serve through the uh, CloudFront distribution and it would serve the cache version after it's cached. And the next time a user comes in and asks for that image, they would already have it pre-built on the CloudFront distribution and can give it in a quick manner. Yeah, so that was our uh, thoughts there. And uh, yeah, Damien, you can just quickly wrap up maybe the pros and cons here. Uh, with this architecture yes so pros here are that um basically uh whatever sort of size you need you can basically directly request out of lambda so say um you have a client um you need to display a profile picture that's 240 pixels by 240 pixels you can request that it will get done you need to request a profile picture 500 by 500 it'll get done um, and uh, the other pro is that you won't be increasing your S3 costs. So you won't be storing all of these different versions on your S3 bucket. They'll be dynamically generated through the Lambda and they'll be cached on CloudFront here. Um, cons are that this will actually increase the costs of your Lambda function, uh, especially if your CloudFront cache is invalidated and once your that image cache actually expires. Um, that's basically it. But um, yeah, Chamath, uh, yeah. do you so have anything just, to Yeah. So the, the high level point is just be careful with the invalidation, the cache. <laughs> and yes, say, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, this architecture have that. Uh, so yeah, so let's go into the next one. Uh, so this one was one of the like a good, like a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, architecture they have uh, referred and like they have a very good uh, walkthrough of this architecture in their GitHub uh, repository as well. Um, yeah, so this architecture starts, so they have a, a web client, so they have mentioned browser, so they, it's using AWS Amplify library there. It has a, uh, has a Amazon Cognitive Authentication layer, then it has uh, S3 directly connected to a AWS Amplify, like with the that connection, and then it uses AWS AppSync with, as the GraphQL uh, layer. And the process starts basically when someone uploads the image to the let's say I upload the profile picture and it goes and stores at S3 and S3 would trigger an event. S3 event trigger would happen here and it would start the workflow and sort of uh, say, okay, DynamoDB, sorry, AppSync, there's an image being uploaded. Maybe it would trigger, uh, let's say, store that key, like the original part of that image. Um, so this is the step function process. So the first step is to do that uh, extract image metadata and it would identify, okay, this is a PNG or JPG do like a quick check if it's not like if it's an IL image or something like that it would just generate not supported image and then this would call the other lambda function sort of the other layer let's say it would parallelly do these two together so one one end it would go recognition other side it would generate the thumbnail so the idea here is you can do this parallelly because these are not de dependent to each other. And it's, it's really nice using step function in that manner. So like they have done, like use both parallel and like sort of step manner, like uh, one by one, like one after the other. And after everything is there, you can basically store all the image metadata into the uh, database and sort of uh, complete the process. So that's simply the architecture of this uh, 
image processing backend so using Lambda. So as pros, I think there are many pros here uh, with this, like uh, one of the main is like using Lambda at like very cost effective manner. And as you can see, like there's not a single Lambda, which is like not like not focused or like not too much, uh, like there won't be any Lambda just running there doing nothing. So it, it is very focused. Okay, this Lambda would directly do this part only. So it's a, it's a superb uh, architecture in that sc uh, scope. And uh, it uses emission recognition to do the object and scene detection. Uh, so yeah, pros, I'd say it's a very good serverless architecture and using uh, Lambda in a very good use case. Uh, Damon, you can start with the cons. Maybe or if you want to add some pros, you can do. Uh, pros, basically, this is a very good way to, I mean, it's also a very simple way to actually get this started. So if you, if you are looking for something like a proof of concept, this is completely easy. Again, you said this is based on AppSync uh, and Amplify. So it's very easy to get something started using those two services as well. Um, I also like the fact that they've used step functions here because it doesn't make sense to uh, have these um, all run uh, in like you have start workflow, then extract metadata and all this. It's really nice that they use step functions here. Um, instead of having one lambda call in another and another and so on and so forth. So um, when you talk about the cons, again, um, the main con here is that when you try to scale this up, there'll be a lot of issues because your trigger point is S3 and um, you have no control over how many triggers that it will actually execute. So you have no idea how many workflows will get started on that um, lambda function called start workflow. And you would also not have any control over the rest of the Lambda functions that are within the step functions. Um, so yeah, but my suggestion would be actually to have an SQSQ, a bunch of SQSQs in the middle here that would actually be able to uh, satisfy that requirement. Yeah, that's a great input. I mean, like from the industry and like the enterprise perspective, Damien gave a very good insight there. And I think we haven't uh, thought of that earlier. Like, I mean, if I thought from the research side or like a very uh, like getting started side, I wouldn't have to think about that at all. So that's a very good insight. Uh, I think that's why we do this couch chat channel to give that uh, input, like different views and opinions. So exactly. yeah, yes. all right. Yeah. So let's go into our last architecture. So this one is the image moderation chatbot. So that's the, the third uh, architecture we got from uh, uh, AWS reference architectures. And here it's a very simple one. So this is the most simplest one we have. So uh, like with these three, together. So what it does here is basically it would uh, have a chat client. So here they have mentioned Slack, like using Slack as their input uh, as the chat channel. And when someone uploads an image, let's say I upload an image to this channel, it would do a post request, like it would trigger this API gateway, func uh, API gateway with a request. And uh, then what happens is API gateway would trigger this Lambda. The Lambda would do like an image moderation uh, task with the uh, image image and recognition. So if it asks if this image is good or bad, like explicit, explicit or not. Um, and if it's not, it would basically trigger back saying, okay, you have to delete this image and it would delete that image from Slack and sort of put a message, this has been moderated. So it's a simple flow, but it, it's a very useful flow as well. And I think another perfect uh, use case of Lambda and this entire AWS architecture uh, to this uh, sort of manner. And uh, yeah, I think they had a good uh, demonstration down here. So if you guys get time, just have a look and see how 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 cool this is when you get it implemented. Then like, uh, so you can start off with a simple implementation like this if you want to like get started with Lambda even or just get hands on. Um, yeah. So I think cons. I think it's mostly similar to the other two which we discussed right now, and the the sorry pros, and the cons. I'd say again the bulk processing part. So if many people try to put images in this scalability, channel, my scalability. Yeah. So I think that would be the con in this scenario. I said, what are your thoughts? Then? Is Correct. It, I would agree. Yes, I agree with what you said there. Yes. All right. Perfect. Yeah. So additionally, I think uh, in the beginning of this, our main video, like the full length video, I, I mentioned, like I have done like a very small implementation of uh, MSN uh, using uh, Node.js and Sharp to like have multiple versions of uh, images, so you can just refer that. But I'd say it's a bit old, like three years old, so not sure if it <laughs> having some uh, outdated libraries or something. <laughs> uh, just use it as, as your own uh, <laughs> convenience. All right, I think we did a 
uh, full coverage of our lambda reference architecture so we have part 1 and 2 uh, now in our channel so you can watch the full video series uh, here and yeah